Okay, well, WrestleMania 32 is in the books, and yeah, I'm having to talk a little quiet again. It's late and everything. Um, you managed to watch it live this time again. Second year in a row, first time that's happened with me ever. Uh, anyway, there were some highs and some, some lows. Uh, but let's get to the action right now. Uh, Starting things off with the pre-show matches. Uh, the first one is for the United States Championship, Kalisto versus Ryback. Um, and yeah, this was a little, maybe too early in the pre-show. Uh, again, you have a, you know, a matchup for one of your titles, a pretty big title, a title that was basically in the semi-main event last WrestleMania. And the stadium was just barely full. Like People were still kind of filtering in when this happened. You could just see all the empty seats. It, <laughs> And that uh, did really uh, lessen the effect of the match, I think. Um, and for the most part, the announcer has basically forgotten that uh, earlier uh, in the uh, world title tournament leading into Survivor Series, Kalisto actually beat Ryback in the opening round of that. And then finally, uh, uh, Ranillo, uh, Mauro Ranillo, uh, actually made that point just as the match was starting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, Ryback kind of dominated early on. He hit a big slam. He tossed he, on Kalisto. He tossed him through the ropes. Uh, Kalisto eventually hit a bulldog from the second rope. Uh, Kalisto hits a knee smash from the ring apron. Uh, Ryback came and tossed Kalisto right back into the ring over the ring post. Uh, they then went to an ad break. And then they came out of the ad break, and uh, there was a pinfall attempt that was midstream. Uh, just missed. Uh, Kalisto went for a uh, tilt to world head scissors and Ryback countered that into a Michinoku driver. Uh, got a two count on it. Ryback then tried to go for a delayed superplex. He basically he had him up on the top turnbuckle. He picked Kalisto up and he was just sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And it was looking really cool. And then Kalisto countered that into basically a cross body move. Got a two count out of it. Uh, another point. Right back through Kalisto into the ring, uh, into the turnbuckle. He accidentally took the, inadvertently, took the second turnbuckle pad off of that ring rope, off of the ring ropes there, and then right back charged. Kalisto hit a drop toe hold, sending right back headfirst into it, into that exposed turnbuckle. Uh, he then followed that, Kalisto followed that up with Selena Del Sol for the three count and the win. Kalisto is still the United States champion. And now on to our second pre-show match, which probably should have actually been the kickoff, uh, the first of the kickoff show matches. And that's the 10 Diva Tag Team Match, Total Divas versus Bad and Blonde. Uh, I'm not going through all the members, I don't have time. Uh, anyway, uh, start things off, you had Summer Rae and Alicia Fox starting the, uh, sorry I'm getting repetitive. Uh, Alicia went for a Northern Lights suplex, uh, Summer actually countered that to a DDT. Uh, eventually, Ava Marie tagged in, and everyone still booed her, <laughs> even though she's on the baby face side. Uh, another point, uh, Ava Marie hard tagged in Natalia. Like, Paige was asking to be tagged in, had her hand out, had her hand out, had her hand out, and Ava Marie ignored it. Uh, hard, basically tagged Natalia without Natalia noticing it. Um... But then uh, Natalia Pag tagged in Paige, and they hit the heart attack, the uh, Heart Foundation's finishing maneuver on Naomi, actually. 
Uh, Emma came in and hit Paige with a wheelbarrow suplex. Uh, Lana actually tagged in finally and uh, came in and she hit Paige with a crescent kick. Uh, then Paige got basically isolated by the, the heel team, bad and blonde. Uh, eventually Brie got tagged in. Uh, Brie went for a top rope move. Lana pushed Brie off the top ropes. Uh, but proved to be uh, sort of pointless as uh, Brie basically snookered Naomi into locking in the yes lock and Naomi tapped and Total Divas win. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say it was a bad match necessarily, but it was a forgettable one. Okay, our third kickoff show match is the Dudleys versus the Usos. And, uh... Right away, the Usos basically went after and started brawling with the Dudleys, but they immediately got thrown out of the ring. Uh, Bubba Ray took um, Jay Uso and basically just started screaming at him about Rikishi and how stupid Rikishi was and everything. The Usos are Rikishi's sons. Uh, eventually, Jimmy uh, super kicked. Oh, boy. Jimmy super kicked Bubba and got to tag in Jay. Sorry, my notes are a little bad here. Uh, eventually, the Dudleys hit the was up headbutt on Jay. Uh, Jimmy broke up a 3D attempt and super kicked Devon and got the three count. After that, the uh, D uh, the the Devons the Dudleys began beating on the Usos. Uh, they then got out the tables, even though they swore they were never going to get the tables out again. They began to prepare to put the Usos through the tables. But then the Usos countered back, set Bubba and Devon up on the tables, and then performed splashes through the tables, and that was it. Uh, you know, <laughs> I suddenly found myself longing for the 10 Diva tag match. Uh, it's just, this was really pointless. And that blew off a feud, yeah. All right, our fourth match, and the opener to the WrestleMania show proper, is the seven-man Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz versus Stardust versus Zack Ryder versus Sin Cara. Um, and right at the start of the match, everyone except Kevin Owens cleared the ring and began trying to grab ladders. And Owens just kind of stood there for a while until eventually Sami Zayn went in and the two began squaring off. Uh, at one point, uh, Sin Cara got up on the top turnbuckle. He hit a missile drop kick onto a ladder that Owens was holding. Uh, the first one to try climbing a ladder was Miz. Uh, Owens back body dropped Zane onto a ladder. Um, Zane did a somersault plancha, threw a ladder onto a big group of guys. Zane then went and hit his tornado DDT through the ropes on Owens. Uh, Ziggler came in and just started super kicking everyone. Eventually, uh, Owens and Ziggler actually super kicked each other at the same time. Uh, Stardust uh, pulled out a ladder. It was uh, the new version from his, of his ladder from the previous WrestleMania. The uh, the Exo Satellite something, I can't remember what it was all called. Sorry. And um, this one had polka dots on it in tribute to Dusty Rhodes. So uh, maybe they're finally going to drop the Stardust character. I don't know. Anyway... Uh, Owens came and hit a big frog splash on Zane through a ladder. Right, Zack Ryder hit an elbow drop from a ladder. Uh, Sin Cara got pushed off a ladder onto a prone Stardust who was lying across a ladder. Um, Owens began climbing a ladder, but then Sami Zayn pursued him. The two fought on top of the ladder. Uh, Zane hit a dra they two came down off of the ladder. Zane hit a dragon suplex on Owen through another ladder. Owens through another, sorry. Uh, Zane was starting to climb the ladder, and the Miz pushed Zane up to the ladder, and he started climbing. He got all the way to the top, he began sitting there and gloating, and at that point, Zack Ryder climbed the ladder and pushed Miz off, He reached, and Zack Ryder reached up and pulled down the Intercontinental Championship belt. And everyone was shocked, because no one would have picked Zack Ryder to win this. They, basically, he was in there because um, Adrian Neville was injured. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and Zack Ryder's father was there, and this was actually Zack Ryder's first WrestleMania that he performed in, and, like I said, a major shock, and you know what, yeah, I had Sami Zayn winning this, I'm glad I was wrong, 
again, Zachary is a guy who's been working really hard for that company, and if you know anything of his story, it, this is a much deserved honor for him. So, kudos. Okay, our fifth match of the evening, AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho. Uh, AJ opened up by hitting a big swinging arm drag on Jericho. AJ uh, dropped Jericho, drop kicked Jericho off the ring apron. Uh, Jericho countered a Styles plancha with a drop kick. Uh, Jericho did his big uh, show off pin, uh, and then kicked AJ in the head when he kicked out of it. Uh, Jericho locked on the walls of Jericho, but Styles managed to get to the ropes. Uh, Styles countered a bulldog and threw Jericho into the turnbuckle. Uh, Styles hit a top rope face buster on Jericho. Jericho countered a Pele kick into the walls of Jericho, but uh, Styles got out of it. Rolled through that and locked on the calf crusher. Uh, Jericho got out of that, hit a code breaker and got a two count. Jericho tried to hit the Styles Clash, but AJ countered out of that and got a two count. AJ hit the Styles Clash, got a two count. AJ hit a springboard 450 splash for a two count. Uh, AJ went for another top rope move. Jericho countered that into a code breaker and got the three. And yeah, this was, one, it was stupid. Jericho, he's going to be gone in a month, so there's really no reason to put him over at Mania. Two, is this terrible 50-50 booking. That Three, this match went on, I think, a little too long. I was hitting the high points there, and I, I was surprised I had that many. I was trying to keep it down, and I still yeah, took up uh, basically about two-thirds of a page of notes, if you can see here. Uh, yeah, none of that is good. Uh, like I said, it wasn't a bad match in the strictest sense of the term, but just disappointing. Okay, our next match, The New Day versus the League of Nations. And it's a six-man tag. This was not a handicap match like they previously said it was. Uh, Wade Barrett did not really participate. Uh, he's really banged up, and uh, basically he's just waiting his contract out. So I guess that's not too big a shock. Um, anyway, uh, The New Day came out, and they came out of a giant box of bootios, and not only did they come out of a giant box of bootios, they came out of it wearing Saiyan, uh, Saiyan suits from Dragon Ball Z, the Ginyu Force, I guess. <laughs> and it was, oh boy. Oh lord. Anyway, um, starting things off, uh, Kofi Kingston and Sheamus uh, were the first two out. Uh, the New Day basically managed to pound save it. Uh, Big E and Kofi pounded Sheamus in the corner while Xavier Played Francesca. Uh, Xavier eventually tagged in. Del Rio tagged in. Xavier hit a discus punch on Del Rio. Sheamus began pounding Xavier to the tune of New Day Sucks. New Day Sucks. Uh, outside of the ring, Rutez uh, Savate kicked. Not Rus Rutez. Rusev. I'm sorry. It's late. Rusev uh, Savate kicked Big E on the outside of the ring. Uh, Kofi got a hot tag. Big E hit a suicide dive onto Barrett and Rusev and Sheamus. Del Rio hit a double stomp on Kofi on the ring apron. Uh, inside the ring, Xavier Woods was in the ring. Uh, Barrett uh, hit Xavier with a bull hammer. Sheamus had hit the broke kick and got the three count. League of Nations win. And then after that, uh, Wade Barrett got on the mic. He said, no man could possibly beat the League of Nations. And it's at that point, Shawn Michaels' music hits. Shawn Michaels comes out and he's in his ring gear. And then Mick Foley's music hits, and he comes out, and he's dressed like Cactus Jack. And then Stone Cold's music hits, and he comes out in a t-shirt and jeans. And not even jean shorts, just jeans. Anyway, the three men go down and beat the crap out of the League of Nations. Then they briefly celebrate with the New Day, and Stone Cold stuns Xavier. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, prediction-wise, at this point, I was only off on one match. Well, two matches, actually. I was off on the ladder match, and I was off on... Uh, AJ Jericho. I was doing pretty good. Uh, after that we have the street fight between Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ambrose came out and he had the shirt he was wearing had the uh, Suplex City sign with the, uh, the DA Anarchy sign. <laughs> graffiti tagged on it. Uh, Lesnar immediately just started hitting suplex after suplex on suplex on Ambrose. Every time Ambrose would mount any sort of offense, uh, Lesnar would just start suplexing Ambrose again. 
Uh, eventually, Ambrose got a kendo stick in. He began hitting Lesnar with it. Yeah, didn't really affect him that much. Again, suplex, suplex, suplex. Uh, Lesnar then picked up the kendo stick and just broke it over his knee. He really didn't use any weapons at all. Like I said, everything Ambrose tried as any form of offense, Lesnar would just counter. Eventually, Ambrose got a low blow on Lesnar. Ambrose rolled out of the ring, got the chainsaw from that he received from Terry Funk out of the ring, and then Lesnar knocked him down before he even got a chance to use it. Uh, Lesnar hit a belly-to-belly -belly suplex off the top rope. Uh, Ambrose finally managed to get something of an upper hand by spraying a uh, fire extinguisher into Lesnar's face. And... After that, uh, Ambrose began grabbing chairs, began piling chairs up into the ring, piling, piling, piling. Uh, Ambrose wanted to put a move onto Lesnar, but a Lesnar again suplexed Ambrose. Funny thing is, he actually threw Ambrose over the pile of chairs and back of Lesnar's head landed on the chairs. It looked like maybe that was going to finally get some advantage to Ambrose, but that was just not the case. Ambrose went up for now. Did counter an F5 into a DDT. Again, looked like maybe we were going to get something. Only got a two count on it. Uh, Ambrose pulled out the uh, barbed wire bat he got from Mick Foley. Uh, and he kissed it for some reason. He then went after Lesnar. Lesnar dodged it. Knocked it out of his hands. And Lesnar grabbed him. Hit the F5 on the pile of chairs for the three count. You know, they talk about, oh, the greatness of Dean Ambrose. But there just wasn't much to Dean Ambrose in this. And again, I may have gotten that prediction right, but I was expecting a little bit more of an interesting match. Um, and just for the record, uh, after that they did a, uh, turned out to be a Snickers ad. They looked, it looked like a backstage vignette with uh, Ric Flair teaching Zack Ryder how to properly, uh, woo, I can't do the woo. <laughs> and then it turns out, oh no, it was Charlotte and she was hungry because she needed a Snickers. It, uh... After that, they honored the Hall of Fame class. Okay, I was actually just trying to fill out so maybe that way I didn't have to start another match on the bottom end of the sheet. All right, our next match is the Women's Championship Triple Threat Match. And yes, it is now officially the Women's Championship again. Uh, during the pre-show, oh, they, 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 sorry. During the pre-show, they had uh, Lita come out and unveil the newly designed Women's Championship belt which is basically a lighter version of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship belt. Uh, I have a picture of it. I had to. I took it with my phone, so yeah, it's going to look kind of weird. Anyway, um, anyway, Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks came out. Sasha Banks was uh, wrapped, had her entrance wrapped by Snoop Dogg, her cousin. Uh, and right off the bat, Becky and Sasha take down Charlotte, but then began working on each other. Uh, Sasha hit a top rope head scissors on Charlotte. Charlotte suplex Sh Sasha. I uh, did a wheelbarrow suplex of Sasha, and the back of Sasha's head hit the top rope, uh, the bottom rope, not the top rope, sorry. Uh, Becky hit a hammerlock reverse to ET on Charlotte. Becky put Charlotte in an arm bar, not the disarmor, just an arm bar. Um, Charlotte tried to put Becky in the figure four. Uh, Sasha broke that up by hitting a frog splash for a two count. Uh, Becky hit a pump handle Uranagi on Charlotte, got a two count on it. Um, eventually, uh, Sasha did a suicide plancha on to Charlotte, and Becky actually did a suicide dive onto Ric Flair and took him out for a while. Uh, then Charlotte got up to the ring and hit a moonsault onto Becky and Sasha. Uh, Becky hit a missile drop kick on Charlotte and then finally locked on the disarmor, but Sasha breaks that up and hits the bank statement on Becky. Charlotte then went and locked in the figure eight on Sasha, but Becky broke that up. Then the three began battling on the corner turnbuckle on the top rope. Uh, Becky, man, Becky hit a fisherman suplex on Charlotte from the top rope. Uh, she then tried to go for the disarmor. Uh, uh, Sasha broke that up, but broke that up in a minute that she started to roll out, that she rolled basically out of the ring before anything else could happen. And Ric Flair then grabbed her feet and helped, kept her from breaking anything up so that Sasha locked on the figure eight and Becky had no chance but to tap out. Charlotte retains. 
Um, this was probably the match of the night, at least in terms of pure wrestling. Uh, we'll talk about the other ma memorable match from this uh, when we get to it. But uh, definitely, probably the best Divas match at WrestleMania ever. I, that's not really saying much, but it's probably up there. I mean, I really can't think of a better Divas match than this. Okay, our next match is the Hell in a Cell match. Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker. Um, you know, uh, boy, there's a lot to say about this match. And there's going to be one thing a lot of people talk about, but I'll, and I'll touch on that, but I'll uh, get a lot of this other stuff off first. Um, during the intros, uh, Shane actually came out with his three sons. And uh, they all went down to the ring. And then Undertaker came out. And I couldn't help but notice he was limping a little bit down to the ring. I don't know if that was intentional or not. But anyway, um, the two started the match. They sized each other up through some punches. Uh, Taker managed to get Shane in the corner. Taker hit the snake eyes. Shane finally countered with a flying elbow. Um, it was at that point I noticed there was not a lot of room between the ring and the cell like there usually is. It was a lot uh, more compact than usual. Um, Taker hit a leg drop on the ring apron. Uh, Taker then hit a last right on Shane for a two count. Uh, Shane then managed to lock on a key lock. Um, Undertaker worked his way out of that. Uh, Shane dodges a Taker elbow drop. That, oh, that's right. Um, at another point, the Undertaker got the ring steps in there. Uh, he choke slammed Shane on the ring steps, got a two count. Uh, Taker went for an elbow drop. Shane dodged that. Dodged that. It, uh, Taker hit the ring steps. Shane hit a DDT on the ring steps for a two count. And then uh, Taker locked on the Hell's Gate hold. And then Shane reversed that into a sharpshooter. Shane then... Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, managed to get Taker set up in the corner. He then uh, pulled out a garbage can from under the ring, which means it was time to try to hit the Van Terminator. And he actually still managed to hit it. He barely hit it. He got one, like, edge of his foot on the garbage can, but it was enough to make it look decently effective. Uh, Shane then rolled out of the ring, got some bolt cutters, and began cutting out a section of the cell. Uh, but Taker grabbed him and drove both of them through, and they landed on the, through that cut section of the cell, and both landed on the German announce table. Uh, they brawled around the tables a little bit. Um, now outside the shell, that's the shell, sorry. Side the cell, uh, Taker hit Shane with a monitor from the announce table. One of them, I think it was the Spanish. And uh, Shane countered a tombstone attempt into a sleeper. Uh, Taker threw both of them through the Spanish announce table. Uh, Shane then set Taker up on the English announce table. Uh, Shane started climbing the cell. He climbed the cell all the way up to the top. And like I said, this is the moment that everyone's going to talk about in this match. He, I'm not joking, he climbed all the way up to the top. And then did an elbow drop from the top of that cell. Taker dodged out of the way and Shane took all the brunt on the table. Uh, eventually, Taker got Shane back into the ring, back into the cell. And hit the tombstone for the three count and the win. And, um, you know, again, I know everyone's going to be talking about that, uh, that insane dive Shane took. But really... The Hell in the Cell match was just a little too long for my taste. I, and I, I'm wary about doing something like that again. Like, one, Shane hadn't really done anything in the ring since, well, a couple weeks, uh, before a couple weeks ago. He hadn't done anything since uh, 2009. So, yeah. You know, I'm really wary about stuff like that now. I'm, I'm not quite as jazzed as a lot of people were about it. Sorry. Like I said, though, it wasn't enough to really kill the match at one. I just thought it was too long, and I thought some of the stunts were a little overdone. But not enough to really, you know, it wasn't a bad match. It's just, I think a lot of people are overblowing it. Okay, and that means our next match is the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Yes, they decided to have this be the cool-down match in between the Hell in a Cell and the World Championship match. Uh, there were quite a few uh, things that happened really interestingly. Uh, Baron Corbin came out with the initial group going to the ring. And, yeah, Baron Corbin from NXT. So I noticed that that was pretty cool. Uh, Mark Henry got his own introduction. He's from Texas, so I guess that makes sense. 
uh, DDP came out. Uh, Native American Tatanka Buffalo was in the. Uh, he came, he was in the uh, that initial group as well, and then the coup de gras, Shaquille O'Neal, came out. And immediately started staring down the Big Show, who was out there as well. Also, the Wyatts did not come out, so that immediately eliminated my pick of Braun Strowman. Uh, the first one eliminated was Fandango. I believe Show eliminated him. Uh, Sandow came in, he was eliminated by Shaq. Uh, at that point, all the other competitors come in, they eliminate Shaq and the Big Show. Uh, Victor was eliminated by DDP. Then DDP eliminated Connor, but was eliminated by Connor. Then Connor got eliminated. Then Tatanka Buffalo was eliminated by Baron Corbin. Uh, Swagger was eliminated. Our Truth was eliminated. Axel, uh, Curtis Axel and Adam Rose were eliminated. Uh, Heath Slayer was eliminated. Tyler Breeze was eliminated. It was then the, my other my dark horse pick, Mark yeah, Henry, was eliminated. Uh, Tyler Breeze was eliminated. Oh, yeah, I said that. Uh, then Darren Young and Bo Dallas were eliminated. And this left. Baron Corbin and Kane, and Kane eliminated Dallas and Darren Young, and Baron Corbin flipped Kane over the top rope. So, yeah, your shocking surprise winner of the Andre at the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is Baron Corbin. I guess this means he's going to get called up to the main roster. I mean, you wouldn't have an NXT guy come in and win that, win a big match at WrestleMania. Well, big match might not be the best term for it, but win a match like that at WrestleMania and then send him back down to NXT. That just doesn't make any sense. So, I guess look for Baron Corbin tomorrow night on Raw. Or tonight on Raw, I guess. Yeah, this is coming up on Monday. Uh, probably Monday ish. Anyway, sorry. And, you know, the show for the most part was more than enjoyable. Like I said, even though I had problems with certain matches, well, save for that Usos Dudley's match, it, most of them were fairly enjoyable for the most part. And then this happened. Um, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders come out, and then The Rock comes out, and he's got this big goofy thing. I thought it was a t-shirt gun. No, it was a flamethrower. He lit a sign that said Rock on it for some reason. He comes down, he talks about how they broke some attendance record for WrestleMania. I guess they broke the WrestleMania attendance record. They did not break the overall attendance record, which was that, um, I think it was the NBA All-Star game. Anyway. Uh, let's see. And then, suddenly in the middle of all of that, the Bray Wyatt's music hits. The Wyatt family does come out, so they were there. Uh, they come down... Uh, Wyatt starts trying to taunt Rock, and then Rock basically, not jo no joke, rips his top off, rips off his trousers. He's in his wrestling gear. Uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, you could tell this was going on way too long. I'll touch on it just a bit here. Uh, Eric Rowan steps up to challenge the Rock. Eric Rowan gets pinned in six seconds. Uh, basically, the Wyatt family then starts getting ready to stock Rock and take him down. And then John Cena's music hits. John Cena comes down to the ring. And, yeah. Uh, they, he and the Rock clear house. Uh, Wyatt tries to hit Cena with the sister Abigail. Uh, Rock breaks it up, hits the Rock bottom. And he and Cena stand in the ring and they, Rock goes, turns to Cena and goes, oh, by the way, welcome back. Um, yeah, John Cena is not bad. One, he is really out of shape. He's really out of shape. He's lost a lot of muscle mass. and He was probably given the okay to come in for like a little 30-second thing. He was not given, I, he's not coming in for a full match. Not yet. Uh, and yeah, you could tell that one, I did not like the segment that much at all. I don't mind the idea behind it, but it went on way too long. It was like 15 minutes long. Really did not need to be. I would have stood for another rock concert for all... And that sadly leads us into the main event, 
uh, Triple H versus Roman Reigns for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, boy, you know, Triple H's uh, WrestleMania entrances are usually very elaborate and well done, and this one was not. <laughs> uh, there was a bunch of guys with white makeup and, like, their mouths were bolted shut, and Stephanie was in some, like, leather get-up. Not that she looked bad. I've, I've seen her look much worse, but... <laughs> Uh, she was out there trying to sound like some weird Roman emperor, uh, barbarian empress or something, and yeah, it was pretty like the uh, Roman Reigns does not come through the crowd anymore, so he came out of, from the ring entrance instead. Uh, was booed quite uh, vociferously. And thought, oh, maybe this is foreshadowing for finally we're going to get that Roman Reigns heel turn. <sighs> uh, early on, Triple H kind of dumb. This match was really slow and really boring. Uh, um, Triple H dominated early on. Uh, at one point, he had a uh, Roman in a hammerlock and started kind of paint brushing the back of his head. And then, uh, tr let's see, uh, Triple H. Uh, began rat targeting Reigns' face because he broke his nose earlier. Uh, he rammed it off the turnbuckle and then drove his face first into the mat a couple of times. Uh, Reigns began to rally. He had a drive-by and got a two-count. Uh, Stephanie distracted the ref, which enabled Triple H to uh, kick Reigns in the groin. Uh, the crowd was chanting, Roman sucks the whole time. Uh, Triple H had a spine buster for a two-count. Uh, the two men began brawling outside of the ring. Uh, Triple H has Swinging neckbreaker off of the announce table, which is actually pretty impressive looking. Um, Triple H hit a knee drop from the second rope. Reigns began to rally again. He hit a big Samoan drop. Triple H rolled out, rolled out of the ring to avoid a Superman punch. But uh, Reigns followed them and they fought for a bit. Triple H threw Reigns into the ring steps. He then threw him into the announce, over the announce, German announce table again. And Reigns actually did something kind of cool. He sort of baited Triple H a little bit. They, Triple H thought he was out of the way, nothing to worry about, and then Reigns kind of bounded out and charged Triple H and speared him. He went right through the ring barricade, and uh, they went into the ring, and, and I guess in the midst of it, Tri uh, Reigns began acting like he had injured his arm at some point. Not his uh, Superman punch arm, his, his left arm, but uh, Triple H noticed that and got, countered a Superman punch attempt into an arm bar. Yeah, and then he turned into a Reigns of Saturn hold. Uh, Reigns rolled through it eventually, got his one arm power bomb, got a two count out of it. Uh, eventually, Triple H got outside of the ring. Reigns started to go for a suicide dive, but he ran right into a punch from Triple H. But Reigns stumbled back and hit the spear. At that point, uh, the ref started counting one, two. Steph pulled the ref out of the ring. Uh, the ref got angry with Steph and said, I'm going to kick you out of here if you're not careful. Uh, Steph got into the ring at this point and was continuing to argue with the ref. He did not call for the bell. They kept talking about DQs, which is odd because initially, they, you know, like yesterday, they announced it was going to be a no DQ match. I guess they changed their minds again. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Reigns charged. Hunter dodged out of the way. Ref fell out of the way and he speared Stephanie. Which, hey, at least finally got the crowd cheering for Roman Reigns. Anyway, uh, Triple H hit a pedigree on Reigns for a two count. Reigns hit a Superman punch. Uh, Steph eventually managed to come to and got the sledgehammer from out of the ring. Gave it to Triple H. Ref warned Triple H not to use the sledgehammer. He was going to call for a DQ again. But this was supposed to be a no DQ match. Uh, but Reigns hit a Superman punch on Triple H before he could do anything. And with the sledgehammer, uh, he then went back. Triple H kind of got enough to come to. Began swinging the sledgehammer. Reigns ducked out of the sledgehammer's way. Countered, back, came back off the ropes. Hit Triple H with the spear. Covered him for the three count and the victory. Your new world heavy, heavyweight champion, Triple uh, not Triple H, Roman Reigns. Yeah, see, that's how bad this match was. It wasn't bad. It was just boring. Uh, way too long for its own good again. You know, I know Triple H is a better, capable of a better match than this. I think Roman Reigns is capable of, more, of a better match than this. This was just not good. 
And, you know, that kind of leads us overall to the, uh, to WrestleMania, the show. And, uh, like I said, there were some good highs and some pretty bad lows. Uh, you know, I was kind of firmly giving this a B all the way through, right up until, uh, those last two segments, the World Heavyweight Championship match and that stupid rock segment that took up 15 minutes. And yeah, that does downgrade this a lot. Uh, I'm going to have to give this a C. <sighs> okay, well, this video should be going up hopefully Monday morning. If I don't oversleep. And, uh, well, the next video after that is going to be the Random Trade Review on Youngblood. I really have yet to start scripting that, though it shouldn't be too terribly hard. It was only four issues, so... Well, okay, it's more like five issues, but again, it, most of them go by pretty quick, so... It shouldn't be too hard to cover. See you all next time.